events and find the signal from the noise and extract that and share that with you. Uh, we're here at the IBM event, um, storage technology event called Edge 2012, where IBM is putting forth their vision for how they're going to integrate and enable storage to expand the solution sets. And I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante from wikibon.org and our new host, co-host, John MacArthur, who's been in theCUBE hosting with Dell Storage Forum in the past. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you. John MacArthur. So, uh, you guys are analysts, so I want to um, get your take on um, what the news is here. I mean, what is the story? Uh, John MacArthur, we'll start with you. We've heard of all the interviews um, across the board from technical deep dives to kind of a high level market overview. What's the story that's happening at Edge? Share with the folks out there from your mind's eye the, the story today. All right, so I'm seeing a couple of things. The, f the first thing is um, uh, a reinvestment in storage. So back, uh, accelerating the amount of investment that IBM is putting into the, into the storage space, but not ignoring the fact that one of the primary areas of differentiation is the ability to take storage and integrate at the application level and at the system level and, and with management capabilities. So, uh, so it's it's not an either or; it's a both. And I think we anticipated that answer from IBM, but but they, I think the, there's real focus on increasing the investment. And then the second thing is, you know, sort of confirmed one of the things that uh, that they've said is that, uh, that 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 we've seen, which is is that they will uh, acquire relatively early. They identify spots where maybe it's better to um, acquire technology than try to develop in, internally. And so they, they will then um, follow those companies on the, in the early days and acquire early as opposed to wait for the companies to necessarily mature into full-blown expensive assets and get into bidding wars with some of the big systems I companies. Break, I just want to break in here sure. for a minute and, and uh, share with the folks out there some breaking news coming on siliconangle.com. Uh, Mark Hopkins just gave me a note that uh, um, Xbox is announcing, Microsoft with Xbox is announcing at E3 in LA, uh, live TV to the Xbox with partners like NBA, NHL, MLB, and ESPN 24-7. Uh, ESPN coverage, um, and soon hope to have the cube on Xbox uh, with our 24/7 coverage. But big news, uh, Dave, about Microsoft with the Xbox, which essentially is a platform, okay, and is a media platform. So, folks out there, big news if you're a big Xbox fan. Again, just another success point for Xbox and Microsoft, and I think that franchise is is going to soon dwarf uh, Windows in terms of relevance. So most, it's one of the most relevant parts of Microsoft, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, you look at Windows trying Windows 8 trying to reboot. And, and get that franchise going on the ground, and, and uh, I actually own the URL WTunes. I'm waiting for the buyout for that one. But uh, you know, Windows is just not that relevant brand anymore, Dave. It's Xbox is really the key. And Mark Hopkins has always been uh, editor at SiliconANGLE. Always been saying that uh, Xbox should be the platform for the phone. For, the, for Microsoft, so just interesting news. So break, break into the action here at IBM. Obviously, IBM enables companies like Xbox to, to do all this, this kind of stuff, it enables media companies in general, NAB, we heard about big data, Dave. Um, so back to, back to IBM, what do you think is the big story? Well, I think you know, to me, it's the realization within the IBM storage group that it has to be more assertive with regard to pulling in these other assets, and we, he we heard from folks from Tivoli, we're going to hear later on people from you know, Systems X and the server side of the business. So it, I, I, my sense is I've been talking about how aggressively it leverages these other assets. This event is all about storage, but IBM is, the storage group is the lightning rod for all these other parts of IBM that, you know, the, the storage group is bringing together, appealing to storage admins, this is largely a storage admin group and a, a partner group, you know, reseller partners and systems integrators. That's a community, and IBM, I think, is being smart about how it treats that community and how it's you know, marketing to, messaging to, and selling to that community. And what I would expect is, this is the, the first of a long line of events in this regard, because this is just great belly-to-belly -belly marketing that IBM's doing. And, and, and groups like Storage, as you pointed out earlier, John, have to have to get reach around, essentially, the, you know, the whole smarter planet messaging. Now we're seeing them align with that messaging, that's important, but at the end of the day, they've got to provide real substantive value to storage admins that are consuming their products. And that really, to me, is what this event is all about. Yeah, I think that's a good point. There, there, are, there are decisions that are made 
the, by storage administrators and their decisions that are made at the application owner. By delivering the integrated solutions, you know, um, by, by delivering integrated solutions, they can capture some portion of the store, uh, storage opportunity, but they can't capture all of it. They have to sell to the storage practitioner as yeah, well. They've got to be relevant. I mean, I think that's why EMC does so well. They make themselves relevant. And, and I think that, you know, IBM Storage Group has had to sort of fight for that attention you know, inside the customer base. So this to me is an, att an attempt, and I think a good one, to really make storage relevant at IBM. Now, um, if it's a one-shot deal, you know, then it's sort so of a wasted what, effort. It's so got to be a continuous you know, focus, and they, they've, they've set, to me, they've set the bar. They've got to keep this event growing. Yeah, now. well, yeah. well, they already beat their first estimate, so yeah, that's good. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. One, one of the quick questions that I have for you is like you were in the discussion regarding uh, sand volume controller, and that is the hypervisor for storage and trying to, trying to drive that. What's your take on, what's your opinion on IBM's ability to sort of capture a storage hypervisor, or create and capture a storage hypervisor market? Yeah, well, I think that, um, and you and I have talked about this, I mean, I think, you know, IBM and Hitachi uniquely have that capability to, to virtualize other people's assets, and I think they've both done very well with it. I think the reality is the primary use case is one of data migration. Now, data migration is a big problem for a lot of customers, yep. uh, but it's, um, it's a way to put an in infrastructure that hedges your bets. You know, if you do an M&A, if you've got you know, a lot of sprawl, or if you've got different groups within the organization that are buying from different vendors, uh, it's a nice way to hedge those bets and use a platform to get data in and out of where yeah, you want. Yeah, and one of the biggest use cases for that kind of technology has been from services companies who are doing data center consolidation um, uh, initiatives, as an example, or big data migration uh, uh, sort of projects, and let's not forget that IBM is a services company, so it wouldn't that makes sense that they're going to be one of the primary users as well of sand volume control. Yeah, technology. so, um, and I think that the fact that Rod Atkins came to this event is good. good. Uh, yeah. I would have liked to seen Steve Mills here, um, mm -hmm. because I think Mills is a, a big presence. I mean, I've obviously had other commitments, I mean the guy's it's very busy. But it would send a strong um, message that this is really important. Yeah, so. I, it would have. I think um, I, I would I, I would have liked to seen him I would have liked to seen him on theCUBE, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mills is a really big person. Or our social came if we as can get is, him. As is Rod. Yeah. Um, they actually make a really, really good team. We saw him at the at the uh, PureFlex integrated systems and, integrated and systems maybe that's the bigger message for them, you know, at their level is 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 PureFlex. I mean you were you were at that event. What's your what's your? It was a good event. It was really well done. I mean, it was extremely well co coordinated. IBM made a lot of investments in the marketing. So they had basically what they did is they had the, the big day long dealio, right? And you had the analysts. They started off with the analysts. They had Mills come in, um, and, and a lot of the, the senior executives in the in the systems business. Rod uh, Adkins was, I, I believe, in parallel double teaming with the customers. And then they brought everybody together in this mega customer event at this bank down in the Bowery. Like, big, you know, huge bank, right? I mean, very rich atmosphere. Really, really, really well done. And, you know, amazing production, great food. Everybody's in a lot of suits and uh, big, a lot of fanfare. Uh, and I think legitimized, again, legitimized that whole converged infrastructure business. You know, prior to that you had you know, kind of EMC and DCE fighting it out and knocking so, each other in the block, and, uh, so, and the, so it's good. So the companies that that want to want to acquire the converged infrastructure, when you talk to companies that are looking to do converged infrastructure, what's the workload? What's yeah, so, the use case? Well, so here's the thing: um, it's all about simplifying. It's all about reducing risk. It's all about supporting applications across the portfolio. The reason they don't want to do it is lock-in, and that's the bottom line: yeah. is uh, so, they're afraid that. That, that the vendor is going to get the pricing power. So does um, IBM get more or less flexibility than, let's say, VCE? Or, more, yeah. I would say. Um, more, more flexibility in terms of configuration? What about in terms of partnerships and things like that? Um, less in terms of branding. Less in terms of branding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, uh, well, we got to wrap. Uh, okay. Our next guest is here. Um, Jeff Jonas is here, so uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back. <laughs>